Hello everyone, my name is Mohsen and I'm a PhD student at the University of Utah. In this presentation, I am going to talk about our paper called Fair Clustering via Equitable Group Representations. Clustering is the task of grouping a set of data points uh, in a way that objects in the same group are more similar to each other compared to those in other groups. As a method of unsupervised learning, clustering is a common technique for statistical data analysis and has many applications. In some applications, such as spam filtering, the groups defined by a clustering algorithm are, are the final goal. But quite often, clustering is also used as a pre-processing step for machine learning downstream tasks. Data summarization is an example of such applications. The fact that uh, clustering is used as a pre-processing tool raises the concern that an object clustering algorithm could potentially produce biased data and feed it into the machine learning pipeline. For this reason, our goal here is to better understand what a fair clustering might look like. There exist quite a few definitions of fairness in supervised learning, such as a statistical parity, equalized odds, or causal fairness. But these notions are not readily applicable to unsupervised learning problems, such as clustering. Unlike supervised setting, in clustering tasks, there are no labels associated with data points, which, for example, say if someone has reoffended after being bailed out. As a result, a well-defined notion of ground truth, which is the basis for most of the existing fairness definitions, does not exist in such problems. So defining fairness uh, for clustering problems is a challenging task uh, and highly dependent on the application. Let us take a look at the problem of polling locations placement to gain an insight into what a fairness constraint may look like in a clustering problem. In this problem, we should determine the polling locations during an election in a way to minimize the, uh, the total distance voters have to travel to cast their vote. And this is related to clustering in the sense that each voter is associated with, a, uh, with one polling location. In our example, voters belong to one of the two demographic groups, gold or blue. And as you can see, the gold voters are in the majority. As soon we are asked uh, to open a single polling location for all individuals uh, depicted in this figure. Since there is a larger size group of voters on the left side, uh, an optimization with no fairness constraints pulls the polling location in that direction, which is shown in the figure. Uh, but it is not hard to see that such solution uh, is not fair from the blue group's point of view, and that's because uh, on average, a blue voter has to travel a longer distance to vote compared to a gold voter. Uh, but what is a, a fair solution in this setup? We advocate a solution where members of different groups face equal distance to their assigned polling location on average. One of the most common objectives of clustering is to find representatives of data points by grouping them and choosing a good representative for each cluster. The quality of this representation is evaluated based on a predefined objective function, which is often distance-based. For example, in the k-means clustering, the goal is to minimize the sum of square distances to cluster centers. We observe uh, the similarity between the objective of finding quality representations via clustering and placement of polling locations, and propose the axiom that in a fair clustering, all groups should be represented equally well. The most commonly used uh, fairness definition in clustering is called balance, which requires clusters to have the same proportion of types as the overall population. To see how balance works, we consider a k-means clustering uh, problem with two centers. Uh, we assume in our toy example, each data point is either blue or gold. The standard k-means algorithm would produce two clusters separated by the dashed line in the figure, where the points on the left side are put in one cluster and the points on the right side would be assigned to the other one. Uh, but a fair clustering with re regard to balance produces a different clustering where each cluster gets two data points from each type, as shown in the figure. So far, uh, we have a common objective for clustering, which is finding representatives for data points and balance as one of the most common fairness definitions in clustering. So the natural question would be if balance achieves fairness with respect to representation cost. See the example presented in the figure with two groups, red and blue. It shows a balance preserving k-means clustering on the left and regular k-means clustering on the right. 
here the number of red points is larger than the other groups. So in the balance preserving clustering, each cluster center is chosen close to its respective red group centroid. As a result, uh, red points are better represented by chosen centers compared to blue points. So it is possible for a clustering to be balanced, but not a good representative of particular groups. Our empirical assessment on four data sets, which, which is summarized in the table on the bottom, uh, verifies this claim. Uh, on all data sets, we compared each group's average cost for standard k-median to, to the corresponding value under balance constraint. We observed that enforcing balance amplifies representation disparity across groups and leads to an even higher average cost for the worst of group. Our discussions uh, up to this point signals the need for a new definition of fairness in clustering where representativeness is a desired property. In our proposed definition, a clustering is fair if it minimizes the maximum average cost across all groups. We should point out that we are not trying to force all groups to have the same representation cost, since uh, such a constraint can be trivially satisfied by ensuring all groups to have poor representations. Rather, we want to ensure all groups have a, uh, good representations while keeping the gap between group costs small. In, in this formulation, group cost is closely related to the objective function of the clustering algorithm. Uh, for example, in the k-means clustering, it could be some of the square distances to cluster centers for each group. But as we will see, subtle differences in how we define this cost function will have a big influence on the final clustering. Focusing on k-median and k-means algorithms, we propose two cost functions for the fair clustering formulation. The first one is called absolute error, which is the sum of distances between data points and centers. And the second cost function is called relative error, which is the absolute error divided by optimal cost of clustering for the given set. In other words, a fair clustering with relative error cost function compares each group's absolute error to its optimal representation cost. But what is the difference between the two cost functions in terms of the final clustering? To answer this question, let us draw an analogy to existing notions of fairness in supervised learning. The well-known notion of a statistical parity captures the idea that, uh, that different groups should be represented similarly in the decision space. When clustering, uh, the, the equivalent uh, notion of a statistical parity asks that cluster centers represent all groups equally well, regardless of their potentially different distributions. Such property is captured by absolute error cost function. In the example presented here, uh, the orange group has a much smaller uh, variance compared to the blue one. Uh, with, with no regard uh, for this difference in distribution, a fair clustering algorithm with absolute error cost function picks a center close to the blue group's center. The reason is that the blue group uh, naturally has a higher cost of clustering and the algorithm tries to achieve more equitable costs between the two groups. However, rather than looking at representation error in, terms, uh, in absolute terms, we can co compare the average distance between members of a group and their respective cluster centers to the corresponding optimal value for that group. This view of representation cost, which is captured by relative er error cost function, is similar to error uh, balancing, uh, error rate balancing notions in supervised learning, such as equality of opportunity. This analogy stems from the observation that group's optimal cost in op unsupervised learning is equivalent to group's base rates in supervised learning. In the example provided here, a fair clustering algorithm with relative error cost function picks a center close to the orange group's uh, center due to its considerably smaller optimal cost. Similar to supervised learning, uh, neither of these notions is uh, preferred over, over the other in all applications. And depending on the clustering task at hand and policy, it may uh, or may not be necessary to acknowledge the difference in group distributions. Now, now I will present our proposed uh, group representative algorithms. We designed fair k-median clustering algorithms for both absolute error and relative error cost functions by formulating it in a linear program relaxation and developing a rounding procedure. Due to time constraint, uh, instead of going into details, we briefly take a look at how the fairness constraint is enforced in each algorithm. 
In both LP formulations, we mi minimize our objective function, which is lambda, with the hard constraint that is, it should not be smaller than the average cost for any group. This cost function for absolute error fair formulation is defined as average distance to cluster centers, which you can see in the top inequality. And for relative uh, error formulation, the cost function is the absolute error divided by the approximation to the group's optimal clustering cost, which you can see in the bottom inequality. The reason we use an approximation to the optimal cost is that the problem is known to be an NPR to solve. Earlier in this presentation, we discussed the problem of placing polling locations, which is a classic example of facility location problem, a problem closely related to K-median clustering. But what is the difference between the two? In most clustering uh, problems, including K-median, the, the number of clusters the algorithm must produce is fixed in advance. But in facility location problem, each facility has an asso associated setup cost, which is included in the objective function and is accounted for if the facility is uh, opened. In, in other words, instead of having uh, set a hard constraint on the number of clusters, the optimization problem would be to minimize the uh, sum of distances and facility setup costs altogether. We define the fair facility location problem as minimizing the maximum connection cost for all groups where customers uh, collectively and uniformly pay for facilities regardless of the group they belong to. Since the difference between fair k-median clustering and facility location problems is in the objective function, we proposed a, a similar linear program formulation to solve the fair facility location problem. The basic version of uh, fair facility location captures the requirement that all demographic groups face a small cost for accessing the open facilities with respect to some distance function. However, in uh, time-sensitive applications such as polling, having a lot of uh, clients allocated to a single facility can lead to overcrowding and loss of utility. For example, a, uh, a study showed uh, that in the 2016 U.S. presidential election, voters in predominantly black neighborhoods waited 29% longer at polling locations than those in white neighborhoods. So we studied a capacity the variant of the fair facility location algorithm as well and proposed an LP formulation with a fixed bound on the number of customers who could be assigned to a single facility. Now we will briefly discuss the results of our experiments. We evaluated our proposed clustering algorithms on two commonly used data sets called census and bank. In the census data set, we consider two groups, male and female, with a sampling ratio of 5 to 1. And in the bank data set, in, uh, the, the groups of interest are single and married, where, again, the single examples are five times the number of married ones. In the two figures on the left side, we compare the group's representation costs given by absolute error fair k-median to their corresponding values uh, given by a standard k-median. In both datasets, in the standard k-median, the minority group suffers a much larger average cost compared to the majority group. But we can see this cost is lowered in the fair clustering, resulting in more equitable costs uh, across the board. The two figures on the right side show a comparison between relative error fair clustering and group optimal costs. Uh, here we observe that while the average cost for the minority group was lowered compared to its corresponding value in the standard k-median clustering, group costs in both uh, datasets are proportional to their optimal cost, which is the objective in the relative error fair notion. In our evaluation uh, of the proposed fair facility location algorithm, we focused on the fair placement of polling locations. We use voters data in Brunswick County from the state of North Carolina. This data contained race, uh, race of each voter as well as latitude and longitude values of their residents. In this experiment, we focused on black and white demographic groups, which roughly constitute 7,000 and 55,000 voters respectively. Um, here we present the result of this experiment uh, for different values of facility setup cost. The results show that a fair facility location algorithm uh, lowers the average distance to polling locations for the worst of group, uh, namely black voters. It, uh, 
basically the, the, the results compared to the standard uh, facility location are lowered uh, uh, in the fair uh, variant of the facility location problem. We should also point out that uh, as we increase the facility setup cost, since fewer number of facilities will be open, it will be harder for the alg algorithm to find a fair solution due to more restriction. Uh, which explains the larger discrepancies uh, between the two groups in fair solution for higher values of setup cost. In this paper, we presented a, a novel approach to think of and formulate uh, fairness in clustering tasks based on group representativeness. Our main, main contributions are introducing a fairness notion which parallels the de development of fairness in classification setting proposing approximation algorithms for k-median clustering and facility location, as well as theoretical bounds uh, for all variations of these algorithms. Uh, our results suggest that our formulation proves, uh, provides a better quality representation, especially when the groups are skewed in size. Thank you.